Hey, welcome back to TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. And we're here again at Cala County College where I've got the head instructor, Bob Moffat, where we're doing a part two series, one of two. This is the second part, and we've already put a root pass in this pipe. Getting ready to put a fill pass, and I want to ask Bob exactly how he's going to do it, and what filler, and what technique he's going to use. So, uh, what, do you, what do you think, Bob? The second pass is a fill pass. I, I really don't have that much to fill. However, my travel speed is going to be fast enough that I'm going to bring this, this weld metal up to within about uh, a sixteenth of the beveled edge. It's going to be slightly concave, and that's where I want to leave it. And then I'll put one more pass in there for a cap. And when I put the cap pass in, we want to we want to follow the procedure and not be more than an eighth of an inch in reinforcement. And we want all of our uh, edges of our uh, weld, the toe of the weld, to be fused into the pipe wall surface with no undercut and underfill. So, are, are you going to do two full ro rotations? I'm going to I'm going to do one complete pass and then I'm going to buff it and clean it. This particular wire we're using does leave a, a, um, a slag. Uh, we're running 75-25 gas, 75% argon, 25% CO2. We're running an 045 flux core wire. Uh, my machine set about 26 volts, about 450 on the wire feed speed. This is a Lincoln Power MIG 350. Uh, I think I've got everything pretty well dialed in. So when I get done with this complete pass, all I'm going to do is take a, a, a wire wheel on a, on a grinder and clean the slag off of it, and we'll be ready for a cap. Okay, now as far as uh, travel speed, how long is that pass going to take? About the same as the root pass. Okay. I, I'm really not, uh, you know, when the pipe's rolling, again, you know, when I was putting the root pass in, I was probably in and around 9.30 or so on the clock. I was down a little bit and kind of pointing the wire up so I'd get that reinforcement on the inside. This one, I, I don't want to be so far down the side of the pipe that the weld's trying to uh, run down in front of me. I want to be up around 10.30 or so on the clock. I want to be further up on this pipe. So essentially, as this is turning away from me, it kind of turns into a flat weld. You know, hot, fast. Um, you know, we could do this. We could we could do this with hard wire spray. We could do this with an 045 L56 and 95.5 gas, 95 argon, 5% oxygen, and spray this weld in here, and it, it, it's the same thing. It's just a hot, fast fill pass. Okay, well, let's talk about this flux core wire that you're talking about. There's a flux inside the wire itself. Mm -hmm. And when you're welding, what do you see? Do you see a bubbling effect, a cleaning effect, or what? Uh, on flux core wires, a lot of times you'll see uh, it, it. You kind of see both. It, 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 if you've ever seen a globular transfer, a hot globular transfer, the wire comes off and there'll be a, a fairly large droplet right on the inside, right on the very end of the wire, and it's coming off and it's falling into the weld pool. Other times, the wire looks like it just turns into a needle. It is, it's got such current density across it with the voltage and amp curve that the wire, the, the energy going through the wire, it just vaporizes the very end of it. And it's very hot, deep penetrating, and you, you, your welds are just free of voids. I mean, you can just fly down through these welds. Right. It's actually kind of fun. When everything's set right, uh, you, you make some good time on these welds. Good. Well, why don't you set up and uh, run a pass, and we'll take a look at it when you finish. Okay. Wyatt, I'm putting this fill pass in here. Again, I'm running about 26 volts, about 450 on the wire speed. Uh, I do have my travel speed set incorrectly. It's a little fast. And this positioner I'm using, I have to feather it with my foot. So I've got a couple things working here. And basically, I'm not doing any kind of extreme wire angle, per se, into this pipe. But I'm watching these sidewalls of this uh, weld come up here, 
We'll get next to the beveled edge. If I see that happening, there, there is a flux with this, or a flux covering slide with this particular wire. So it's a little hard to see the exact weld pool. That was the fill pass. Right, I'm putting the last pass in this piece of pipe here for this weld to complete it. And what I'm looking at, um, kind of odd to describe, it looks like a great big old blob of butter. You really can't see the um, ripple pattern or the weld pool itself because of the slag covering on this particular wire. However, I'm watching the slag form about a quarter of an inch behind the wire. And I'm keeping the wire inside the weld groove, not weaving outside of it. The weld is so hot, fluid, that it doesn't take much oscillation for that weld pool to reach out and tie into the side bevel, so I don't have to worry about that too much. I have my wire more up on top of the pipe this time than I did with the root pass. Looks like I'm coming up on the end of it already. Well, Bob, you've cleaned it off. The part's cool. And I, I, I notice you've got a nice positive reinforcement right here. Is that the ideal condition? That's the ideal condition. It, it's a little odd because, you know, when I described when I was filling that up that I bring it up almost to the top and I can still see the beveled edges. While I'm putting that pass in, this last cap pass, it, it looks a lot taller than what you actually see right here Okay. because of that slag coating that's up on top of the weld bead. Um, You'll notice that that doesn't have any ripple effect like you would see with typical wire feed welding. Yeah, I did notice that. Even on spray, you know, if, 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 if an operator puts a, a, a slight oscillation or even a robot as they go along, you'll see a ripple pattern in all of the weld metal. But on this particular flux core wire, it, it's just smooth. And so, you know, when you first start welding with this type of wire, it takes a little bit of a trust. To, to get used to what you're looking at. You, you think that you don't have it, or you think that you have it too full and you want to travel faster and you end up being too thin. So after you do a couple of them and, and you learn your parameters and learn what you can get away with and, and know that what you want to end up with here, you know, once you figure all that out, you can make repeatable welds over and over again, high speed, high quality, with no voids, defects, discontinuities whatsoever. Okay, well, in, in part one of this, we did the root pass. This is part two, and Bob went in and did a, a second fill pass, and then did a cap pass, and this is the end result. Bob, I, I want to thank you and the college for uh, being part of our program. Thanks for watching Tig Time. I'm Mr. Tig.